Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Vikram Raya. Vikram is a trained cardiologist and functional medicine physician. Uh, he's an international speaker, high performance coach, and an avid real estate investor. He's been an active in multifamily real estate since 2015 and is the founding partner and CEO of Viking Capital Investments. It's been amazing to see his business grow and thrive over many years now uh, and get to know him. He just had an amazing conference this past week. They did a great job. I had the honor of being a speaker there as well. And we talk about that a little bit, but man, he he provides so much value to us today and to you, the listener. Uh, and just thinking through where he came from, the mindset shift from being a physician to, to getting getting into real estate and and really just the, the time freedom, uh, the vac- being able to take vacations, location freedom, health freedom, uh, and, and just freedom from stress. He goes into many different things. I know it's going to be helpful to you in ways that's helped him to grow his business or how he's helping so many others uh, to do the same. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the show today. And quickly, I know you've probably heard a, a slight sound change uh, in the show the last uh, week or so. But believe it or not, my internet has been down at the house and I've and I have had to record somewhere else. So I wanted to give a shout out to a company that I think you need to know about. They're a friend of mine and a, a, something that we are using more and more for our investors. And I hope that, that this is going to help you to build the relationships with your investors. You've heard me talk about the loyalty component right? And how important that is in your syndication business and being able to raise more money and just have that relationship with your investors. And the company is lifelonggifts.com. Uh, the owner, one of the owners is a friend of mine and they've allowed me to record in one of their offices today. So I wanted to give them a shout out. I hope you will look at them, look at lifelonggifts.com. And when you are looking for uh, gifts for your investors, man, you can, you can send a gift, uh, a nice knife set or cutting board, many different things that's in engraved, has their family name on it. And, you know, every time that they see that gift, they're going to think about you. Uh, And so I hope that you will go to lifelonggifts.com and and consider them when you are are thinking about gifts for your investors or your friends or family, especially right here before the holiday season. Vikram, welcome to the show. It's been an honor to get to know you a little better. I mean, you just, you just hosted an amazing conference this past week. Uh, I'm grateful to have been a speaker there, uh, but just your growth. I've, I've watched it happen over the last number of years and uh, just honored to have you on the show. I want to give you a minute to like, tell us a little bit about your background, because I think it's helpful in helping those that are listening to think about where they're at. They may not see opportunities that they have uh, that you realize and, and have maximized uh, and now are helping many other people to do the same. So give us a little bit about who you are, where you started, you know, a few years ago before real estate, maybe, and then let's jump in. Whitney, thank you so much for uh, letting me join you on the show. Uh, I've been looking forward to coming on your show for a while now. So I'm pumped. I'm ready to talk to your listeners. I'm ready to share my story. And uh, yeah, we, we just had, uh, this as a soundbite, uh, we just had a, our first ever Viking annual multifamily immersion live where literally we're, our goal is to up level uh, investors so they can become really sophisticated level four investors, or if they want to take the leap and do what me and you are doing, Whitney, become full-fledged multifamily investors, syndicators, and, and launch their multifamily empire. So, uh, you know, I'm all about, you know, sharing the wealth. Someone, you know, took me under their wing and, and, and showed me how to do this. And my goal is now to just pay it forward, just like you are. Okay. No, that's awesome. And I want to jump back, like your background, you know, you were, uh, or maybe you still are a cardiologist, physician, uh, to give us a little bit of that picture. And then, you know, go moving from that to that mindset shift to, man, now you're just doing amazing in, in real estate. Like, uh, you know, I think that's, that's hard for some, right. You know, have this, this career set over here that, man, they've worked so hard for, but man, you know, you've, you've taken a big, big shift. So growing up, uh, you know, <laughs> my mom always wanted me to be a doctor and, and my dad always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I'm like, oh, there's no way I'm going to please both of them. <laughs> so let me focus on what my mom wants. And, <laughs> and you know, I, 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 I was sort of default sort of, you know, in our culture, in the Indian culture, like, all right, you know, sort of these are your 
it's it's indie it's it's in, engineer doctor or loser right those are your three options right? so so you know i i got into it initially because hey yeah, this is something interesting a lot of people i know are, are doing it now there's no doctor in my family immediately i was the first in the family but i i thought it'd be interesting to pursue so i pursued it but really what gave me the fires i had people in my own family have heart disease i have six people in my family die of heart attacks. I had my own father collapse in front of me. And that shook my very core. I was like, I got to figure this out. I mean, for myself, for my, you know, for the people, my friends, my family, uh, and, and not just our culture or our family. I mean, this is the number one disease killer in the world. I mean, yes, COVID has killed, uh, unfortunately, so many people, but, you know, once this does resolve, the number one killer will continue to be heart disease. And so I thought, hey man, this is a good mission to go for. And, you know, I studied really hard. And to be honest with you, I was not the most skilled person in every room I, I, I approached, but I did have the most willpower. And I really think, uh, you know, skill power is great, but willpower always trumps skill power any day. So between the two of them, I was able to maximize my, I guess my capabilities uh, and I just, I, I had to out hustle a lot of my, comp, you know, my <laughs> other students because, you know, that's, that's all I had. So uh, I, I studied, I was in Atlanta uh, and ended up going uh, to medical school. And then, you know, thankfully I got into Georgetown. I was doing my internal medicine residency. And then I was like, all right, uh, my goal is to get into cardiology, which is one of the most competitive things. And I actually didn't get in the first time. And so again, got back to the hustle and the grind, uh, doubled down and then finally got in. And I was like, all right, my life is set. Uh, no questions asked, no detours, straight ahead, right? But what happened was, Whitney, I was uh, in the in like the middle of my fellowship where I was training to become a cardiologist, and I just noticed that the people around me were extremely unhappy. They were doing things not for the sake of their true purpose, which is to help people. They were doing things for the sake of money. And in fact, they were doing things I, which I thought were not even ethical. And that really shook me to the core. I'm like, wait, I struggled so hard to become a cardiologist, and then this is the kind of career I'm going to get myself into. And then the other thing was I noticed everything is about pill for an ill. Everything was about like not taking care of the root cause of the problem. Like, okay, like if you're, uh, you know, if, the, if the, there's a flood in your room, in your apartment and the water's overflowing, they're just putting band-aids on the pipe instead of like turning on the faucet, right? So I was like, I got to figure something out. So I made a promise to myself that, look, if I'm practicing traditional medicine by the age of 40, something went terribly wrong. And I was 32 at the time. So I already had something in my life. I need to figure out a, a, an alternative income source and something else. So I tried options trading <laughs> and I, I actually got an options coach. And this is for stock options for those of you who are listening. You know, it, it seemed interesting. Everyone's like, oh, you don't need much money. You can make a ton of money. You can be a millionaire. I'm like, oh, okay, this sounds cool. I got my butt kicked. I almost got kicked out of uh, fellowship because I was so focused on options instead of like my training. So I was like, okay, no, I need to get my degree finish up, but I need to figure out something else. And then just like many of you guys, you know, Robert Kiyosaki entered my life, right? I read his first book, which was pretty interesting, but no light bulbs went off. It was not until I read Cashflow Quadrant where I'm like, uh-huh, I need to get on the right side of the quadrant, which is for you guys who know, it's B and I, the business order of the investor. But I'm like, I gotta do something that makes sense to me. I, if it's too complicated, I can't figure it out. And hence, real estate investing. And so, that's when I started my career in single family, uh, Whitney. Nice. So you, you caught the bug, right? You realized that, hey, I want to be on the business side, the entrepreneur, the investor, uh, investing side. I think it's interesting. You know, it wasn't like, uh, I mean, he, I think in real estate is kind of, kind of introduced in those books uh, initially, but it's, uh, it's not really the focus. It's almost more helps you with the mindset shift, right? It just being an entrepreneur and investing and thinking that way outside of the J-O-B. Right. Uh, and it sounds like that's that's kind of what happened to you. Uh, and so, you know, you went now, uh, I mean, you know, thinking about yourself then and how you're helping many others now to go from that busy professional status, right, to being the excellent passive investor or active investor or, you know, or operator. Uh, what are some of those um, the things that maybe held you back or hurdles you had that were just some of the most difficult things to, to get across uh, at that time, making that transition and even just even mentally, I think one of the biggest things, but how did you do that? You know, I, yeah, I, I've seen people, uh, you know, back to real estate, uh, you know, for the last 5,000 years, it's the number one wealth creation vehicle on the planet. And so that, 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 that sort of a historical statistic really was like, you know what, uh, uh, you know, crypto will come and go businesses, you know, but this is going to stay forever. And, 
you know, there's only a limited amount of land on this earth. <laughs> and the more you own and control it, the more likely. And the other concept was, you know, my, all my attendings, my, my mentors in medicine were like, you want to make more money, work more hours. And I was like, I called BS. No, there's got to, <laughs> no, there's, I call, I called their bluff. I'm like, I don't believe in that correlation because I can only work 24 hours a day. There's no more I can do. So how are other people earning five times, 10 times, a hundred times more than me or adding more value, right? And I go, yeah, they want, they added more value, but how do they add more value if they have a limited amount of time? And it was like, essentially they created, you know, engines and, and delegation and scale and passive income and all these things. So, so when I went down this uh, single family road, I was like, all right, this is the way to go. But what was holding me back was I felt like single family was the safe route and, and doing it, uh, you know, in a small way is the way to go. But what I soon found out is a gentleman came to speak to us at one of our real estate investment clubs, which I used to sneak off after work and attend without my wife's knowledge. And she was always wondering why I was always coming home late. <laughs> and I, you know, she was probably wondering, Hey, what is this guy doing? I'm like, no, no, it's nothing nefarious. It's no, I was really trying to self-educate myself because no one gave me this education. It's, it's so amazing. I don't care if you have an MBA, you go to a medical school, law school, some major, even a master's or, or a doctorate. You don't learn the principles of wealth creation or creating this financial freedom. And so that's what you and I had to learn the hard way, Whitney. And so it was really uh, learning these principles and basic things that I, I started building the single family home company. And I did it in Atlanta because I couldn't do it in, in DC because uh, I was just, uh, I was so overwhelmed. I, I was only by myself. And, and also property prices in DC were pretty high. And so I thought, okay, let me do this with my dad in Atlanta and, and do this. But it was not until I heard a gentleman speak about something called multifamily and syndications and, hey, you know what? You can buy a hundred unit complex and you know what? You can bring other people's money to, the, to do it and you can get paid when you start in the middle and at the end. I was like, that, that sounds illegal, first of all. And even, it even sounded illegal. It sounded, he said it's a syndicate or a syndication. I was like, dude, I, I, you know, I'm a Marvel, Marvel uh, comic book fan. I've, seen, I've heard about the syndicate. I don't know if I should do this. So that's sort of my first exposure, Whitney. No, I, I'm, I have a similar story, just the aha of, of like this syndication thing that I'd never heard of before. And wait a minute, maybe it is possible that I too can go buy a hundred unit building that I, I just, I would have laughed at you so many, you know, so many years before if you had mentioned that, right? Uh, but now it's like, okay, now I, I believe I can. Uh, once I, I learn more about the process and seen so many others that, that were doing it. Um, and so, you know, you are now also helping so many go from, uh, like good to extraordinary, right? I think, you know, like you and I were talking about before the show, you're doing some coaching, you're helping a lot of people just think this way, learn these things that you have learned. Uh, what are some things that are, you know, that, uh, that helps them uh, that, that you have found that, Hey, I, I've got to go through these things with people. I've got to teach them these things like for them to make this transition and for them to be successful. I, I think it's the mindset of like, where do they want to go? Like, uh, you know, I'm blessed to sort of coach a lot of these uh, high performers in the world out there. Uh, you know, I, I have uh, three different sort of uh, businesses that, I, that I'm passionate about. And it's all because of real estate that allowed me to do these passion businesses, right? I love real estate investing, specifically multifamily and syndications. And from that, I have a coaching arm called Viking University, where we help people literally uh, leave comfortable six-figure jobs and achieve financial freedom and success and, and pursue their passions and have more time with their family. On top of that, I have a lot of doctors want to pivot out of medicine. Uh, no surprise, right? The, the physician burnout rate, Whitney, in this country is astronomical. And throw in what we, they just experienced with COVID, working like Im immense hours, putting their life at risk, their family at risk. And, and, and the bureaucracy is getting worse. And you know, you've been through governmental agencies where you worked, I remember, as a, a police officer in the military. And those are so honorable services. But the way they treat sometimes they're, the people who, who give the most to them it, 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 sometimes there's a disconnect of what they should, they deserve, I think. And so, you know, these physicians are, 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 are begging almost, Hey, is there a better way? Can I, can I practice the medicine the way I want and have income coming in? So I'm not working like a dog. Right. And that's usually the, the actual word they use. I don't want to work like a dog. I mean, it's crazy. And then finally, you know, I wanted to practice cardiology and medicine the way I wanted to. And so I created a health Institute called the Vitology Institute, where literally I'm taking people off of like diabetic medications, I'm reversing diabetes, I'm reversing hypertension, 
And now, now we're taking that to the next level with biohacking supplements and taking people to that ultimate level. I mean, uh, this year I climbed Pikes Peak. Um, you know, I've done like a couple of races and, you know, I achieved a six pack at the age of 43, which, you know, not, it's not normal. So, uh, and I did this while running my uh, syndication company, being a dad to two kids and traveling, you know, uh, with my wife all over the country while we're doing charitable work. Right. So how do you do all this? It's because we have a destination in mind. Whitney, why I'm so impressed and enamored by you is your vision for where you want to take your life. Can you share the listeners again? I mean, what made you start the foundation? Yeah, uh, no doubt about it. It, it was a uh, you know, we were exposed to adoption. Many have heard this story, but just briefly, you know, we were exposed to adoption, never had even thought about it before, but it was as simple as why would we not do that? Right. I mean, it just sounded like the right thing to do. And so within a week we applied to adopt from Ethiopia. My first son Samuel came home two years later. I mean, we just really struggled to pay for the adoption, right? Just that process 40 to 60 grand uh, many years ago. And then we started process again, right away. And again, you know, our, our, uh, within a year, my second son Elijah came home, struggled again, you know, did tons of fundraising. Uh, Lord provided everything we needed. Uh, but, but it was still like, this keeps so many people from being able to, to adopt, right. And bring these children home, 160 million orphans in the world. It's a real shame that it's so expensive, but we want to provide a, a means, right. And partner with these families committing half of our personal profits, you know, to help them. Uh, and so, yeah, that drives us. It drives my whole family and pushing LifeBridge capital, uh, you know, and, and even our investors, you know, allowing them to play a role in that as well. I have two words for you, Whitney, meaningful capitalism. <laughs> and that is now what's driving me. Like, uh, thankfully, knock on wood, I've done enough to where I could probably go sit on a beach and do a pina colada or something, you know, or, or, or a gluten-free green energy drink, okay? For, <laughs> <laughs> but but why, why am I still hustling? I get up at 4.45 for the last decade, right? Why am I doing that? It's because, uh, you know, I, I, there's all these uh, goals I want to do. And, you know, we, we did a process called EOS, Whitney, that really transformed my company. And it really took us from becoming like sort of like, you know, chugging along and doing incremental growth in Viking Capital to literally we're, we're trying to become like, you know, one of the top multifamily syndication companies in the country. And um, uh, that EOS uh, talked about, hey, what is what is your business about? What's your value? What's your culture or what what is it that you're trying to accomplish? And we finally synthesize what we're trying to do. We're trying to do uh, trying to use real estate for good. That's exactly what we're doing. And so. With our profits and things, we are helping every community we touch, right? Uh, we have Wellness Wednesdays on our properties. Uh, we try to do uh, green energy or sustainability projects on, you know, with uh, solar or water saving devices. Uh, we try to do community efforts where we're giving backpacks to kids. Then the profits that we do, we're like, okay, we, we're building wells in Bangladesh. Um, there's the sex trafficking ring uh, uh, in a lot of the Asian countries and uh, through the Tony Robbins organization and some of the, uh, his, his uh, efforts, uh, we've donated money to help stop some of that. Um, you know, we're helping uh, kids uh, uh, who are pregnant uh, get back to getting jobs again. And so this is giving me joy. I, I feel proud to tell my kids, hey, I'm not just there making a buck. Uh, we're, we're giving back as well. And, you know, my wife, she doesn't care about real estate, but she cares about what the impact we're having. And she's so proud of that, you know, and, th and that's what makes me feel good sometimes. So I, I say that exact same thing about my wife. She couldn't care less about real estate, but man, she is 110% on, you know, on our adoption mission, right? And helping these families. She loves that. And so it's, it's just, man, brings that support of the whole family in a big way. Uh, speak to a little bit, uh, you know, why is that? you know, just from your experience too, and, and I know the listeners heard me talk about this some, but I'd love to know from you, like, how, why is that connected to, uh, you know, quote, success, right? End quote, uh, you know, that being able to give back and, and have a mission bigger than just that financial financial gain. Uh, uh, it also goes back to, uh, I'm going to answer that question, but it also goes back to, hey, how come more people are not as successful, Winnie? And it's because it's not that they're not, they don't want to be successful. It's just comfort kills drive. And what happens is the people I'm exposed to, they're making six figure salaries. Why would they struggle for the potential seven or eight or whatever? Or why would they risk all of that? You know, and people are so risk averse and, and that comfort is really what's 
diminishing a lot of people and i'm like it's time to stop being comfortable but it's start time to being like you know uh where's your legacy where's your uh, what's your impact you want to have you know i want you to have income but what's the impact too and that impact is what's driving us so look it, it, it just i i don't mind hustling harder if i if i'm if i'm trying to make a dent in the universe but like you know after your after you have two nice cars a nice home and you know you can take a couple of vacations a year that's, most people are pretty satisfied so that the drive is extinguished but if i'm saying hey look uh, i want to help 100 families uh, adopt children and take 100 kids out of orphanages that's a whole different game right or if i'm saying look uh, i want to create water water uh, water projects in in sub saharan africa or in india or in thailand where there's they don't have clean water and i and you can say that but when you go visit and land and go look at the people at the villagers face and you see them saying like this and they don't understand your language but they're going like this in, in thanks to you and you you start crying <laughs> there's nothing else you can do right that's that's the power and, and it just takes you beyond your own you know microsphere of what you're thinking about yeah yeah. Uh, before we shift to a few final questions, Vikram, anything else I just on that thought you want to leave the listeners with, uh, just that mindset shift and giving back anything around that uh, you want to leave them with before we move on? Yeah, I just want to tell them, look, uh, you know, I, I love uh, the imp impact and income, but really they got to figure out where they want to go and really defining your destination. And sometimes, guys, this has happened to me. My dreams are not my destiny. Like my dream was to become a cardiologist and I did, and I, I did it for almost 10 years and it was amazing. And I feel like blessed to be part of so many patients' lives, but uh, sometimes things shift. And what I want you, your listeners to find out is what's the golden thread in my life? How do I take all my passions, my interests, my, my business ideas, and how do I integrate into one thing? And that epiphany for me happened during COVID where I had a physical clinic that I was running full time. I was trying to do the real estate on the side. Um, I was still trying to do the family stuff. And there's a concept, Whitney, called the five freedoms that it, like one of my mentors was telling me like, what are you chasing? What are you after? I'm like, you know what? I really want freedom. And everyone says, yeah, I want financial freedom. But guys, that's only 20% 20, uh, 20 of the equation. The other 80% is I wanted to have time freedom. I wanted to be able to take my kids every morning to the bus stop. I want to be able to take a vacation whenever I want. Location freedom. I want to be able to work from Nashville, from Atlanta, from Costa Rica, anywhere in the world. And by be physically being in the clinic, I couldn't do that. So that's when I learned to make my clinic virtual, right? And then I want vitality freedom. I want ultimate health and vitality. Whitney, for me, energy is a new currency. Energy is a new money. If you don't have energy, all the money in the world is worthless, right? Uh, this is a quote one of my uh, uh, colleagues uh, shared with me. He goes, uh, you know, uh, a healthy man has a thousand desires. Uh, a sick man only has one, right? And so, you know, you need this currency of energy and vitality to accomplish your dreams, guys. So that's why I really have to focus on that. And the final thing is mindset or stress or freedom from stress. And having this resilient, bulletproof mindset that you can handle whatever comes to you. Someone dies on you. Um, your business goes wrong. The IRS, you know, tries to audit you. Whatever that... Uh, happens, you should be able to handle that and have the centered focus, have faith in something higher, but then have the, be able to withstand that and then still deliver, still serve. Love that. I was taking some notes. It's incredible just to think through those things. Uh, you listed five freedoms there, right? Uh, and I, I just think, you know, we should be thinking about each of those things and, and especially the health, like you're talking about, man, if you don't, I love that quote too. I've heard that. Uh, yeah. If you don't have your health, who cares about the money, right? It's irrelevant uh, at that point. Uh, well, you know, shifting Vikram to uh, the operator that you are and, 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 you know, the syndicator, just the real estate business, uh, just that you have grown and thinking through even our current market and some things like that. Uh, how do you prepare for a downturn? Like you're, you're looking at purchasing a property or maybe you're, you're talking to that that investor who's worried about a downturn or, or maybe even the, you know, as an operator, just looking at that project, how are you all preparing for a downturn as you make, you know, new purchases? Yeah. You know, uh, we've come, we're, we've, uh, I think finished our 21st acquisition, um, uh, across the country. We own in Washington, DC, Atlanta, Austin, um, Dallas, uh, Indiana, 
um, and, and, and even in Nashville. And we're at the point where like, all right, so we have, you know, we've accumulated these assets. Most of them have done incredibly well. The returns for our investors have been very positive, but you know, the goal of the game as what Warren Buffett says is don't lose money. Right. And then that's rule number one. He said, well, rule number two, look at rule number one. So capital preservation is key. And Whitney, you've done a phenomenal job of doing that where you protect your investors downside, but again, you've given a tremendous upside plus now with your launching of your fund. So we are launching a fund number one, because we want to protect against um, inconsistencies of one deal versus a, a blended return among all deals. And so multifamily in general, guys, is pretty forgiving. And number two, it's a team sport. I built up a team now. I started with me and Ravi, my business partner and co-founder. And now we have a team of almost uh, 10 folks and we're probably gonna get up to 12 soon. So what that does is each of us is focused and specialized in one thing. Second thing is I have a, a advisory uh, board of uh, sort of a, a tribe of mentors, if you will. I have people who've, who've been through at least two or three corrections and, and, and downturns and they've given us advice. And what I'm watching right now uh, when this is being recorded, there's a, a huge upheaval in China with, uh, I think it's Everglade, uh, I, I believe, uh, the, I, don't, I think I don't have the exact name right, but it's a huge development company that's going under um, and it's sort of like a mini Lehman's. And so I'm already thinking, look, is it still safe to buy? And so I, I'm saying, yes, if it's in a good area, good location with cash flow on day one, and uh, right now floating rates are what we're using, and in the floating rates or the, this uh, private debt we're getting, we're buying, we don't have to, but we're buying uh, an extra cap, a very tight cap, the tightest cap possible. So interest rates don't go up uh, on, on us on, the, on these deals. And that's one of the strongest protections you can do for your investors. The second thing is I'm already, uh, you know, as a cardiologist, uh, Whitney, I stress test every single deal. <laughs> right, I, I, I put the deal on the treadmill. I push it hard. I see, hey, look, what happens if this goes wrong? What happens if this goes wrong? You know, and and we're able to sort of put all these scenarios and sort of red team the deal. And we already have like plans in place of what to do if our property management company leaves, if if um, uh, liquidity becomes too tight, or hey, uh, do I have? And so what I have, I have cash reserves on hand. I. I've, I've, I've protected myself against interest rates being hiked. I can have the capability to refinance the deal to longer term so I can ride out the storm. And I am very transparent and I, I engage with my investors very often and I share with them what's going on so that nothing is hidden. You know, uh, we're a what you see is what you get company. And we treat our investors like they're friends and family because initially that's all they were. We only had friends and family investing with us. And now obviously we've been blessed to have, you know, a lot more folks uh, investing, but um, I think those are the keys and you can never predict anything, but you can be able to uh, be prepared for it. Love that. So many great points there. Uh, uh, yeah, so many great points. Uh, interest rate cap, the reserves, uh, even treating your investors like friends and family, because that's what they were, right? I mean, when you got started and now obviously that's grown a lot, but I just think there's so much said about having that mindset towards your investors as well. Uh, on that note, uh, what's your best source for meeting new investors now? Um, you know, I like going to meetings like um, uh, I've been recently asked to speak at a lot of events. And so like uh, uh, Passive Income MD is uh, an interesting group of physicians that are all interested in learning about passive income or real estate. And so when I was one of the keynote speakers there and that was helped to connect with that community. You know, uh, I spoke in, in a uh, we're speaking. Uh, CBRE is asking me to speak uh, on their multifamily forum in Atlanta. And so there'll be a ton of uh, investors and uh uh, uh, you know, investment professionals there. And I've been able to share, you know, what I've seen on the ground, you know, day to day versus all the the theoretical. Um, you know, uh, I've been on a lot of people's podcasts sharing, sharing the message, you know, thank, thank, thankfully been on your, your podcast. So, and, and we, we have a newsletter and, you know, we have almost oh, probably 8,000 people on our newsletter. Not all of them are investors, but what I'm doing is adding value, man, here's a business book. I recommend you read this week. Here's what we're seeing in, 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 in economic trends. Hey, here's something to up level you as a person. Uh, hey, here's here's what we're seeing on our properties, and it's just value, 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 right? And on the street, I'm meeting more and more people. Initially, no one knew us. Now, like you know, we're we're starting to get well known, and it's like a friend of a friend of a friend or a colleague. Oh, I heard about you guys. Oh, I heard about you. And so, you know, your reputation is everything. And you know, thankfully, out of all the deals we've done, we've only had one deal that was very difficult. And in the end, we decided to, uh, 
withhold any profit on our end and give everything to the investors and they made a, a, a decent return not what we had initially anticipated but enough where it was very meaningful for them to have that profit and so we put our we treat our investors like gold because that's what they are and uh, and it's come back in in tenfold for us and the other thing is like you know um you know just uh uh, just uh, we have a, a passive investor course that we've done and what that's done it's a free course and you can go on our website you know vikingcapllc.com and sign up for the seven day passive investor course and i poured I, I literally worked three months on this course and it's just the best of the best information and and, and it's just helping up level people and the, i think this this kind of giving and this, like the conference we just did i mean uh financially did it make sense probably not i should have focused on more deals but man did I have a great time? And did I enjoy meeting people from all over the country and, and sharing our knowledge? It was, it was awesome. Vikram, what's a couple of daily habits that you have that have helped you achieve success? Uh, I think uh, there's a book out there, guys. If you don't use it, I highly recommend it. It's called The Productivity Planner. It's by a company called Intelligent Change. And what they've done is essentially taking the best sort of productivity hacks and opt, um, sort of efficiency and optimization techniques and put into one little uh, planner and book where you're literally, it, it, it sort of uh, walks you through how you should have an incredible week. And so the coolest thing it tells you is, look, you can only, you can accomplish only one big good thing a day. <laughs> and so if you just did that, your whole life would be, uh, you know, up-leveled. And, and there's something called an Eisenhower matrix, which I, I, I highly recommend people do. And if I could just walk your listeners through it right now, Whitney, please, it it would be essentially, uh, and this is based on, you know, Dwight D. Eisenhower, and he was being one of the most amazing presidents out there. They're like, you know, why are you so efficient, Dwight? And he's like, you know what? I, I put everything in this, in this uh, uh, matrix. And if you could imagine on the top right, uh, it, it's basically not urgent, but important. That's top right. Top left is it's urgent and important, right? UI. Uh, bottom left is... Uh, uh, urgent, but not important. And then bottom right is not urgent, not important. So what you want to do guys is literally, let's say you make a list of maybe 30 things you want to do in your week. You want to put them in these boxes, the things that are not urgent, not important. You just want to stop doing delete or give it to from someone else, but essentially delete them because they're probably not going to add a value. And that that's, what's clogging up your day, Whitney. And so the bottom left is, uh, not urgent. I'm sorry, not important, but urgent. These are the things you want to delegate out to somebody else. So if you're making, let's say, $200,000 a, uh, a year or $100,000 a year even, your hourly rate's $50 an hour. So you should try to do tasks that are $50 and above and anything less, do your best to outsource those out. Now you have the top two quadrants, urgent and important. You got to handle those. Those are important. But the reason why they're urgent and important is most likely you didn't handle them upstream. If you handle them upstream, they wouldn't be so urgent and they would just be important. So then that leaves really not urgent, but important. And this is where the juice of life is. This is where like, you know what? I've been meaning to start this podcast, but I've been delaying it week after week, right? Because there's no, there's no gun to your head. But if you did that, could you blow up your brand? Could you impact more people? Could you get your message out? Yes. You know what? I've been telling my kids I'm going to take them to Disney World, but you know, I just am so busy. Do you know the smiles on their faces and the joy they're going to see when you actually do take them there and, and you live up to your word as being a good dad, right? So this is, oh, date night. You know what? I'll get to it. I'll get to it, right? These are the small things that if you did that, it would, it would add all the, the joy of your life. And so, you know, and, and, you know it's like, hey, I, I, I've been meaning to find a business partner for my company, but you know what? I can do it on my own, right? There's no urgency. But if you did that, get that business partner, could you explode your business in, in the next 12 months? Yes. So anyway, I, I put every, all my life and I periodically look at that through that lens and, and I've done that. And the last secret I want to share with your audience is this, and I've just been doing this the last six weeks. And one of my coaches, Craig Ballantyne, who I uh, love and adore, he taught me this, this strategy and it's really something called magic time. So we've been always taught, Hey, 5 a.m. club, get up early, grind, grind it out, do underwater yoga, do uh, workout, you know, work out every morning, uh, you know, do gratitude journal, do all this stuff. Hey, all that's great. And all that's important. But what I found is, taking at least 15 to 30 minutes in the morning and doing that NUI task, not important, but urgent task, first thing in the morning where you have no other obligations. And you're, what you're doing is you're taking, you're, you're taking these micro bites out of a big goal and you're making progress steadily. Hey, I've been meaning to, meaning to write a book, Whitney, but I just don't have the time. 
Okay, what if you got up, you normally get up at six, you get up at 5.30 and from 5.30 to six, all you do is, you know, a hundred words and you're going to get the book done no matter what. So that magic time, first thing in the morning, um, before you do your morning routine, before you do whatever you normally do is a powerful strategy Mm -hmm. to get those micro wins. It's such good information right there, Vikram. I mean, that last five minutes could have been just the podcast by itself. Uh, I mean, that's such that's so good. You know, you and I were speaking uh, a few, I don't know, maybe a month ago uh, about the conference, right? We were talking about different things. We're talking about our businesses. And one thing you recommended, uh, yeah, I mean, you brought up then was the perfect day formula. Guess what? I've got it yeah. right here. <laughs> I, I, love, I love holding this up because I read this after you recommended. I had not heard of it. Uh, and, and of Craig Ballantyne, uh, and I love this book. I know he has a perfect week formula as well, and I've already got it on my bookshelf and I'm about to read it. Uh, and so it's, it's been so helpful uh, just to think through the day. I don't think it's like, hey, you can get up 15 minutes earlier, right? You can do that, right? Uh, I mean, we've all had to do that at some time uh, you know, or another in our life. Uh, you were used to sleeping in until 10 a.m. maybe when you were a, a teenager in the summer, then all of a sudden you got a job and now you got to get up at eight. Well, guess what? Uh, you know, you can get up 15 minutes earlier and make some stuff happen. Uh, on that note, uh, very last thing, uh, how do you like to give back? Um. You know what? First, you give back to yourself. Uh, self-care is actually overlooked in our industry because we're all these high achievers and, you know, we're super men or super women. And so definitely want to give back to yourself. You deserve it. Be compassionate with yourself. Do self-care because uh, if you don't take care of the engine, then how can it, you know, pull, pull, pull the load? The number, number two thing is, um, yeah, uh, we, we're actually uh, been inspired by Whitney and a lot of other folks this year, and we're starting the Raya Family Foundation. Um, and... Uh, with profits of one of my most recent acquisitions, we're gonna seed that uh, foundation and really choose some cool charities and really give back. But uh, our company, Viking Capital, has been giving 10% of its uh, uh, profits to charity for the last you know, seven years and a uh, lot of different things. And we've done two charity galas in downtown DC where we supported an a, a organization called Girl Rising, where they take uh, impoverished people in Africa, Asia, India, you know, South America, where they're sold into sort of like indentured servant servitude and we free them and they, they go back to school. And uh, that's been very uh, rewarding. And it's also, you know, a good time. You have fun at the gala, you're supporting a good cause and you're promoting your company in, in a, in a positive way. So. Vikram, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show, even get to know you a little better personally, hear more about your business, your desire to give back. Uh, it's incredible and how you're helping so many others to just really find fulfillment and, thinking about giving back, right? More than just the financial gain uh, and, and just that success or what everybody thinks of success anyway, but having that, that means uh, and thinking through how, how do I give back? Having those freedoms, uh, you're thinking about the health side and being able to have the time freedom, the location freedom, all those things that you have brought up, man, it's a lot of so much value that you've given to us today. How can the listeners get in touch with you, learn more about you your, and, your, and your conference? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think the uh, best ways uh, on LinkedIn, um, I have a, a little website I've created so they can directly get me on LinkedIn. So link with Vic.com, L I N K with W I T H Vic V I K.com. So link with Vic.com. You type it in, boom, just DM me and uh, love to connect with you in any way I can. Thank you for listening to the real estate syndication show brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and video to further your success.